Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today we're going to go over 10 of some of the very best tweaks currently available inside of Cydia for the untethered iOS 8.4 and 8.3 Taiji jailbreak. <laughs> All right, so to start off, before you install any of the cool tweaks highlighted in today's video, you will need to be jailbroken. So I will have a few annotations on the screen now, as well as cards, the first of which will be a link to my untethered iOS 8.4 Taiji jailbreak tutorial for all iDevices. And then I'll also have some of my other past top Cydia tweaks videos, because in today's list, I have included some premium tweaks, meaning you have to purchase them inside of Cydia to officially use them. However, the aforementioned other top Cydia tweaks videos videos do contain more free packages. So definitely check those out. And again, today's list will be a mix of premium and free tweaks. Also down below in the more info, you'll find a post on my website that contains everything highlighted in today's video. All of the tweaks written out for you directly in said post, as well as on the screen throughout this video. It's just so much easier to have all of the information directly in one place, and it keeps the description box looking clean. Moreover, the post also contains a constantly updated spreadsheet of all iOS 8.4 compatible tweaks. So without any further ado, let's get straight into the first tweak, which is a premium one. It's called Mirror Mirror, and essentially it changes everything you know about multitasking. So I'm going to give you guys a really quick example before we get into the settings. So let's say we're inside of the settings app. All we have to do is pull down on the right hand side and we can essentially minimize it and put it into a windowed view. From there, you can fully interact with the application as well as whatever you actually have going on in the background. You can even open up more windows similar to what we have going on here inside of the settings app. So let me go ahead and close out of it quickly and I'll show you guys some of the settings. So first of all, you have the option to enable it. From there, you can set the default orientation. So whether your windowed apps open inside of portrait or landscape mode, you can also change the default sizing as well as the minimized size. So you do have an option to actually minimize windows to whatever predefined setting you have set up here. You can also change the bar size, so the size that appears at the top. You may have noticed previously I did have a black bar there that said the application name, so in this case settings. That's important because that's how you can actually drag some of the windows around, and then beyond that you can just change the activation method and you have a few toggles. So exiting out here, let's go ahead and give you guys another quick example. So let's launch up settings again and let's trigger it to bring it into that windowed view. We can also launch Safari and do the exact same thing here. Now it's going to put them right on top of each other, but we can actually move them to wherever we want just by dragging on that status bar. And then again, remember you can interact with both windows as well as what's inside of the background. You can even open up more if you really wanted to. And when you actually tap on that top status bar here, again, you have four different options. You can either make it so it's just the main application, so it kind of maximizes it and puts it inside of the foreground. There's nothing left in the background. You can also put it to the smallest setting, which again is predefined inside of the mirror mirror options. And then finally you have the option to close out of it or change the rotation for it. So if we wanted to rotate it into landscape, we can do it just by tapping on that button there. It's really that simple. And again, remember to close out of them. All you have to do is just tap on that X down below there at the bottom and they're gone. They're still open inside of multitasking though, so it doesn't close out of them. It just makes it so they're no longer in that windowed state. And speaking of multitasking, next up we have Olympus, which is another really awesome multitasking tweak. Again, it is premium, but essentially it completely revises the multitasking switcher, and it also adds two things over to the left-hand side. We have music as well as toggles if you go even further over. So that's basically it, right? Well, not exactly. Exactly. You'll notice here we have four of the most recent applications, but if we actually pinch anywhere on the app switcher itself, it will change the view. So let me show you what I mean. If we actually pinch inwards, it switches all of the applications, all of the recent and all of the background applications into just an icon format. And if we spread it apart like so, it will make the application icon significantly bigger. So we can have them just so that we see a few applications currently on the screen. As you can see, we're at about two 
right here if you count the ones on the left and the right hand side. And then of course, pinching out on that can change the view again, and you can really go with whatever you want. You can have a maximum of nine windows up on the screen at any given time, and the settings for it are pretty basic. Now next we have one tap clear. It's for notification center. It's really quite amazing. I use it on a daily basis. So swiping down here for my notifications, you'll notice that I have this X over on the right hand side. That's typical, that's normal, right? Well, not exactly because with one tap clear installed, all you have to do is just tap the X once and it closes out of all of the notifications for that specific application. You no longer have to confirm the clear with one tap clear. Now next we have heart transplant. So let's go ahead and open up the music app. This only works on iOS 8.4 with Apple Music. So if you have Apple Music, good. You can use heart transplant. It's very simple. So let's go ahead and just search for a song here. Let's just go with one of the trending searches, the top one. It's a Drake song. Of course, we can tap into it. And then let's go ahead and bring down the volume here. And you'll notice that obviously I don't have this song inside of my music. I can go back here. So let's just go ahead and cancel that search and go to recently added. I definitely do not have that song inside of my music, but with heart transplant, all you have to do is just tap on the heart and then it will automatically add that song to your music. As you can see here, it's now inside of recently added. All we had to do was just tap on that heart or that like button and we're good to go. Moving right along, Instacode is a pretty great tweak. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. I'm just going to show you guys inside of City. I don't actually have it installed personally because I utilize a longer passcode. But as you can see, what it does is it merges the date as well as the passcode screen into one. So it's just more streamlined and it provides an overall better look for your lock screen. And I definitely recommend it. So let's go ahead and launch up multitasking here with Olympus, go into the settings app, and we'll get into the next one. So we have type status. This is one I'm really starting to like. So you basically have two main things with type status. You have typing and you have read. So you can see when people are typing and you can also see when they read your messages system wide. It doesn't matter which application you're in. So let's go ahead and tap on typing here. And in order to get this enabled, all you have to do is toggle on status bar overlay. And then from there, I also recommend toggling hide inside of messages. So that way you don't see the type status when you're actually inside of the direct thread. So now let's go ahead and toggle on status bar overlay and tap on test typing. So as you can see, that's how it will appear when someone's actually typing a message to you inside of iMessage. The exact same thing goes for when people read your messages. The screen for those settings is exactly the same as the one for typing. So as you can see here, let's just do it one more time. It adds it to the top. It's really great, streamlined, and I think it should be built into iOS by default. Again, it works system wide. Now next, we have a tweak I've covered before called called Zeppelin. As you can see, instead of having the default carrier text, we can actually set a custom logo. And the reason why I'm covering it now again is because I recently came across an awesome high resolution icon pack that I use all of the time now. It's Star Wars. So for those of you who are major Star Wars fans like I am, you can install this Zeppelin icon pack. It's just called Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's available inside of Cydia. That's all you have to search for from there, just install it along with Zeppelin and then inside of the settings app, once you're there, all you have to do is just tap on whichever Star Wars icon theme you want and that's it. You're good to go and it automatically applies it. So we can set up C3PO if we want. As you can see, it does set it in real time and you don't need to respring whatsoever. Now let's go ahead and back out of Zeppelin here and get into the next tweak. So let's go up to general and then from there inside of usage, we can go to battery usage. This tweak is called detailed battery usage and essentially it provides even more information inside of the battery usage portion of the the settings app than you would normally receive. So as you can see, we have a chart up at the top that includes battery drain and how fast we're actually draining the battery or how much we're using our device, as well as the active usage period. And it breaks down which applications are using up the most of your device's battery. And it actually includes various things like system processes. So you can see here that Backboard D is using up about 12% of battery usage through background activity. And as for the ninth tweak, Folder Closer just makes it so that when you open an application that's inside of a folder and then press the home button, you're no longer backed out to that folder. Instead, you just return to the main home screen. 
And now for the final tweak, we have key shortcut. It makes copying and pasting so much easier. So let's go ahead and demo this first of all by selecting all of this text, but instead of tapping and then tapping select all, instead all we have to do is just hold down the A key on the keyboard and it will automatically select all of the text that's available when we release it. Now we can hold down C to copy it and then from there we can hold down V to paste it. Now this is exactly like what you'd find on a computer, so a Windows based PC or OS 10 for instance, you just hold down Command C for copy then Command V for paste. We can also hold down Z to undo it and finally we can hold down X to actually cut it and then paste it again. So you'll notice that when we hold down X it will get rid of all the text just like you'd expect on a PC and then you hold down V to actually paste it again because of course that's copy, cut, and paste. Alright guys, I really do hope you liked this video. If you found any of the tweaks useful be sure to give it a big thumbs up because these videos take so much time to create and to get all of these lists together. Also, if you guys want to help out the channel, then be sure to click the link that's down below in the more info and just sign up with your email. It's a really awesome service that essentially finds all of the newsletters that you're subscribed to, some of which you might not even know about. Say you're subscribed to Apple, Google, as well as Netflix, and you're only interested in receiving Apple and Netflix, you can unsubscribe from the Google newsletters, and it's really just that simple. It's perfectly safe, streamlined, and it should be built into things like Gmail and Yahoo Mail by by default in my opinion. Again, signing up with that link below really does help out the channel and I was actually able to do a $100 Amazon gift card giveaway last week with that service. So if you sign up using that link, just know that you are encouraging future giveaways. And if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos similar to this one covering tweaks or things like jailbreaking, of course click that subscribe button down below next to my channel name if you have yet to. Also be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter as well as Instagram at ICUID. And for those of you interested in my iPod Touch 6 generation and iPad Air 2 giveaways, be sure to watch my recent video. I'll have a link to for you guys on the screen now. That's actually concluding this weekend and the winners will either be announced tomorrow or on Monday. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. <laughs>